conflict between House Steiner and House Davion rages on. Was it smart for the Archon to hire mercenaries to deal with the bandit army on Carver Fox? Kelly knows that once the bandits are dealt with, the mercenaries will pull out. All right, everyone. Well, this is Lars, your casual mech warrior. Welcome to today's First Circuit Podcast number 22. All right, uh, so this is our uh, first stream of the new, new year, and tonight we have Biter. Blarg. We have an Ian. Hello, and Happy New Year, everyone. Yay, and an Old Bob 10025. Blarg, blarg. <laughs> blarg, blarg, blarg. Blarg, blarg, blarg. All right, so um, I know uh, there's been a lot of hype already in the chat, so should we just start with the big stuff first, or do you want to start small? Well, let's um, just give people a, a basic rundown of what um, uh, last podcast we covered. You know, basically the whole past year, MechWarrior Online, and for this podcast, maybe the next couple, we're going to cover what's going to happen in MechWarrior in the future. Obviously, the big news that's just popped is the Fafnir. But before that, I think we should mention the changes to the loot bag. I think the uh, stocking stuffer thing. Yes. Oh yeah, it definitely changed a lot of different things on on gameplay. Plus, also getting stuff done. Because I know for myself, I, I you know at that certain point before they actually extended it, which it did extend it to the eighth, I was like, I'm done. I'm not gonna do this anymore. And then they extended. It, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> BGI listened to our complaints for once and extended it. And I'm happy with it. The event was more officially good than my book. Yeah, last uh, last podcast we covered that. Oh, they just recently added in these extra loot bags, and we said, "Oh, this is great because we only have a couple of days to get all of these damn things." <laughs> just uh, they're giving us plenty of more time to actually acquire them. So yeah. Yeah. I acquired all of them, and now I am um, I was thoroughly pooped from getting three hundred loot bags, and I've been sort of doing other things in the meantime. <laughs> been oh, MechWarrior out. Yeah, same here, man. Uh, but I still gotta get some for old Bob, though. Like, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of different uh, um, faction warfare scouting stuff, and just kind of get my loot bags and just deal with it from there. Just, just chew off my arms and take it like a man. Yeah, and then I'll probably still grind away at a few of them because I know I'm not gonna complete all of them, but I'm still always game for getting free free things. Well, yeah, it's just the MC alone. I mean, some of those like fifty, you know, fifty MC plus also five hundred thousand. Like I'm down to thirty one thousand C bills right now because I bought a couple max. I'm like I broke, broke beyond broke. <laughs> now I just need some money. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yep, but long and short, at least for today, there's only two more days for the stocking stuffers. But um, let's move on with the general topic of, you know, in the coming year, obviously, there's going to be a lot of new mechs, uh, a lot of them that we've covered as they've come out. But the newest one that's just recently been announced is the Fafnir. I think this has been <laughs> one that people have been talking about for quite some time. So I'll let someone <laughs> else to yeah, take the lead. Fafnir. Yeah, everyone's I'm really so excited bad. about this. Mm -hmm. I mean... Myself personally, though, I'm not a very good assault pilot. And I have to admit that I'm not very good at that. But I have to say, the Fafnir is one of the mechs I did use back in Mech Warrior 4, and it was phenomenal. I mean, it was just absolutely just killed everything in its path. That's the coolest thing about this thing. But uh, you know, I mean, with the standard packs and everything else, I mean, just the first part of the standard pack, you have the 100 ton mech with two of the mechs, two of the three of the mechs do have ECM, which which works out very nicely. Because then you have to worry about the different pesky uh, missile boats that are out there. Um, then also, too, you're looking at the hard points. The hard points, you have one that's that's uh, four ballistic, one, two, um, two, three, and three energy. That's the first one. That's a five. The five B is a, what three, four, five energy, two ballistic, and one ECM. Then the third one, you pretty much can go ahead and like do whatever you want with four ballistic and five and what's a four? Got a camera read mm -hmm. that. For energy and so basically you have a lot of different <laughs> stuff to go and do and when you get to the to the reserve uh, mechs you're looking at a bunch of missile mechs so you're able to go ahead and pop in a bunch of streaks or you have to go use SRMs or even LRMs in case you want to be LRM boats which would be kind of interesting give me the MIRMs yeah the MIRMs too <laughs> yeah the MIRMs would be pretty crazy to go ahead and do oh yes one thing I do like about them, though, is they all do come with the, uh, the double heat sink, so you don't have to spend the 1.5 million on each mech to go get them done. It does come with Indo Steel, except for the, which is kind of weird. The 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 hero mech doesn't come with Indo Steel, but the and the what the 6D or, or is that the 6D or the 6U? Sorry, that's the 6U. It doesn't come with Indo Steel, 
you still got to spend that but it's, i mean for a hundred ton mech it starts adding up you know as far as like the ender steel plus also the um plus the ferro fibers as well and okay. i mean ecm three out of six not bad good good man so yeah. um my impressions are at least you know the, this mech sits in a similar kind of area as the annihilator does it's 100 tons and at least for the standard pack it's a whole bunch of energy and ballistic with a limited engine cap of 325 at least so you can go a bit faster than the annihilators are stuck to um the standard pack yeah whilst there's a lot of variations of energy and ballistic that is all you've got and the ballistics are only ever stuck in the side torsos or in the arms you know it's one or the other with the mm. Annihilators, the really neat thing is at least the ballistics are all spread out, and you can have like up to six ballistics. So you can go like, you know, Mass UAC 2. Yeah. Um, so the Fafnir is only stuck with either you know, arm mounts or side torso mounts for the basic pack. The other thing with the ECM, whilst it's very handy, it's taking up the center torso slot, which uh in and of itself is usually a place where you put ammo at least exactly. explosive ammo types or even mm -hmm. just with heavy gorse rifles that space is not available for your heavy gorse ammo instead you probably have to shove it in the legs and the arms but it's um, one slot though right it's it's one slot for the ecm in, in the um, ecm's two slots yeah oh, okay. Oh, okay. it takes up yeah. all the space in the center wow torso. okay so ECM though with an you know, ECM annihilator almost is you know with dual heavy gauze is totally worth the idea but obviously the the one that you can get as the collector edition has only three energy hard points to back up those you know two heavy gauzes um maybe you could put in some snub nose PPCs in the arms but um yeah one of those energy hard points is stuck in the head which really limits what you can do with it so I would say overall, interestingly enough, at least um, for me, you know, I don't have the nostalgia from previous games. So mm. uh, the Annihilator has a brilliant shape. It ha we already know it has brilliant quirks. It has a nice distribution and a large number of energy and ballistic hard points that allow you to really mix and match and make your builds. And it's scary. With the Fafnir, it's a lot more limited with how you can build it. But yes, indeed, that ECM is very interesting. And I think mm -hmm. at least uh, not the special variant, the 5B there with 5 energy in the two ballistics, that is a much more heavy gore spec. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the paywalls, the reinforcement pack is bringing uh, a lot more mix of missiles. And this is totally uh, different and, in fact, what really sets it apart in some respects from the Annihilator because it's got... Uh, ballistic and missile usually actually go pretty well together, whereas energy and ballistic um, so kind of struggle together with one, one another sometimes. And that's always been at least a really difficult uh, design problem with the uh, uh, the Annihilator. And so, yeah, reinforcement pack, you've got four ballistics, uh, you know, two ballistics in each side also, and four in the arms. That can be turned into a mean brawler, LBX-40 plus SRM-24 maybe. <laughs> that is just something <laughs> you've never really seen. Um, that's frightening. Yeah. yeah, that that could be a very scary brawler, and even the one the one with uh, you know ballistic side torsos, energy all over the place, and missiles all over the place. That one could be really interesting to build for. You could put in some big M MRMs or whatever. And yeah, lastly, yeah. yeah, lastly, the hero sort of has almost the best of all uh, respects in some regards, other than ballistics. Like it's got a whole bunch of energy, it's got a whole bunch of missile all over the place, and a ballistic and DCM all shoved into one package so uh jack of all trades much <laughs> yeah yeah it's a jack of all trades it would be uh the yeah. hero might be uh yeah yeah i don't think ian's too fond of it but i'm actually kind of curious about what you could do with the fafnir hero mm -hmm. I, I have a question mm -hmm. do you do you think that basically because missiles have become the new kind of quote meta ish as far as streaks and like srms as far as brawling wise do you think they put them behind the paywall because of that no, I would actually think they put him behind in the reinforcement pack because the Fafnir is classically um, the ballistic yeah. mode. Okay. Yeah, so that's the main reason here. Yeah. So nostalgia money grab. Yeah. Hmm. And okay. talking about nostalgia, look at this thing. It looks, like it looks about, pretty. I would like to talk about the looks real quick. Um, because yeah. what okay. I'm really surprised about, PGI did not go for the Mech Warrior 4 look of the Fafnir, yeah. um, which I put up on my screen. Um, where the torso is really wide, 
and it's a flat mech, so to speak. And they went for the tall approach. You can see in all of the classic art you can find on Zana, for example. So um, hmm. it's interesting in my opinion, that choice. I hmm. don't disapprove. I like it. I mean, I love the mech, but so but cool. the problem is though it's a walking torso. Like if you look at the uh, the heavy gas guns, I mean, we're we're I mean. Uh, you could drive a Volkswagen Beetle through that thing, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it's it's gonna be. I just hope they actually make the quirks where, um, like with, I hope they don't make this make make the same mistake they did with the Uzeal, where the torsos were so big that it was just like it was just instant death pretty much for them. Um, there's a few things you had to go over. There's like again the comparisons I would say with the Annihilator, and the Annihilator has that really weird and interesting shape that actually spreads damage really, really well, and it has extra survival, all that survival stuff on top yeah. of it. And the arms, like a big thing of this thing, it's as you say, it's a big giant blob of a torso, but these are tiny little cicada shield arms at the sides. Um, they're not going to be able to block the damage, at least from the you know the front. Arc. Yeah. It's only from directly mm -hmm. to the sides that these arms are actually going to shield anything, which means the arms are safer. But then again, um, yeah. Uh, no. Another big question is that um, center torso. It's like a, a big prow poking out. Yeah. It's like a little hellspawn prow or something like that <laughs> in the middle of the man. Yeah. With, with like your cockpit dead center. Mm -hmm. So this thing risks being cockpitted, at least if you're staring head on at people. But also, just to, it's a big question of um, the that center prow. How much of it is side torso? How much is it center torso? That's a good question. But um, I think kind of like how we see with a lot of mechs that come out is that you know it all depends on the quirks. Is this thing going to have structure or have armor? Um, you know, we tend to see that a lot of times, you know, maybe after like a week or two of usage, people might, uh, make a point and say, Hey, like my side torsos are getting blown off very easily. And then Russ and PGI might do a quick update a week later. Yeah. It tends to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, um, I, I would say one funny thing again, the Annihilator has plenty of energy to, um, hard points in the head and center torso, allowing for some zombie potential. But all the Fafnir's either, you, you, at best, you've got one energy in the head, which means maybe a flamer or a medium laser. <laughs> and the other ones that don't even have an energy in the head, they have an AMS in the head, which means only AMS in yeah. the head, like no yeah. laser AMS. Do you think? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think the. Uh... What I'm guessing what the hitboxes will be for the center torso, and let's see with that left hand side where it has the uh, like two little um, like, like outcroppings right before the yellow. I think that's going to be the line like right there for the center torso. And then the the right left torso will be starting from the yellow, like with the guns basically. Yeah, I, I, I do very thinking. much hope, particularly since this is a big, huge fan favorite uh, with a large number of people, this has to come with standard 100 tonner buffs to its armor. Yeah. armor in particular so this is the armor buffs you give to the king crab you give to the atlas k and formerly to the annihilator but they slightly tone that back it needs that then the second thing is of great importance that the annihilator already has is crit chance receiving quirks as well yeah that would actually help it out just like one of the you know a couple of atlases do have that as well mm-hmm mm-hmm Hmm. Okay. Uh, the yeah. other funny thing, at least when this drops, is you're a big giant walking torso, the arms aren't necessarily the best as shields, um, and this thing's legs. Look at how big those legs oh, are. Oh, yeah. You're looking at I... what, what, like 65, I could 70? see armor quirks for that. Are you oh, yeah. Like the, like a lot of the 100 tonners have yeah. armor quirks for their legs. It's just a question yeah. with... Some like this is a, sometimes a thing people have with the annihilators. They see an annihilator, they start shooting for legs because a lot of annihilators strip legs, uh, art leg armor, and he can't ever shield the legs. You know that's where it's good shape. You know, no, yeah. no matter how good your shape is, the legs are usually easy target, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. So the Fafnir, even if it gets great side torso stuff, might just want to shoot its legs off. <laughs> 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 very true. Very true. Yeah, oh and actually, God. I'm trying. I'm trying to think too. Is that because, I mean, I love missiles, and I'm looking at the 5E, so they're going to have the two missiles per arm. It's going to be really weird looking. I mean, 
Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm really curious how a lot of these weapons will be represented. Like, uh, mm -hmm. what does the energy side torsos look like? What does a missile in the side torso with yeah. energy look like? I'm, I'm going to mm, hypothesize that the energy side torsos would be maybe on the upper portion? Maybe? I don't know. Well, it, it, if you look at the upper portion, there's like these two kind of wings, pods almost, and those yeah. make good sense as missile pods. Like, you just throw in... Yeah, in that gap, you just put little oh, missile yeah, pods. Oh, huh. yeah. Yeah, that I mean, like, that I'll see. Pod. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect really sense, actually. Whereas the energy, I'm guessing it just fires from where... Because you don't have ballistic and energy, I don't think. Well, all they got to do for the for the rendering no. is just put a little little circle, basically, wherever they want to, and that's where the energy uh, hard point is. You know, that's what mm -hmm. we've been noticing. Like, yeah, all so I think mechs. I think the energy will be where the ballistics are. You know, that that big giant hole, the <laughs> the oh, giant yeah. side caps. Yeah. Huh. Oh god. Here's also an interesting question: Is Stefani going to get a unique model for the heavy guns? Or will we have out of that hole um, peeking out the original heavy cost model? That'd well, be, well, didn't they, you know, didn't they say that they're going to go ahead and upgrade all the different, um, um, like new weapons with all the different new mechs that are coming out? Typically, yes. Okay. So this will probably have all the new models for all the newer tech. Okay. Yeah, I mean the lazy way to do it is just you have the giant holes at either side and stuff just comes out of them. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. um, how would you model? Afraid of. Oh, yeah, because um, one thing is at least uh, that giant hole. Are you going to shove in two like rotary five barrels in there or something like that, or you know, two other ultra barrels? That would look kind mm. of silly. Or like, or kind of like how we do the two LB tens or something like that in this thing. Like, I, I would like there. to see um, if you equip four machine guns, just four little. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that'd be fun. Four like machine um, guns and run around. That'd be cool. Yeah, so beyond um, the actual mech itself and the way it looks, how about the new um, decals and patterns and such? The patterns I like. You know, Davion Stein and Steiner, yeah. I'm happy about that. You know, basically mm -hmm. it's bringing some love back to the inner sphere, which is kind of cool. As far as the veneer, um, like decals, the little dragon and the gold bars, uh, I, okay. And the colors, eh, you know, it, it's there, but they're going to be uh, tuned. Yeah, I, I personally really like um, the pattern in particular because the Fafni is a uh, Steiner mech. And yeah. the fact mm -hmm. that we get Davian in addition to that is super cool because Davian is the pattern I put in everything anyway. And it's I also well. think the decals make a whole lot of sense because um, it's Steiner, so wealth, Money, so yeah. gold actually makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Okay, I, yeah, but I, like the, I like the meta joke here. Initially, when they released it, it was only actually Davion, but then I think people may have pointed out it was a Steiner mech, so they added Steiner on top. <laughs> uh, this is way better than just having the Crusader pattern or the Applejack pattern. They are actually giving um, it's a fan favorite mech with actually cool looking paint schemes given away in the pre order bonus. So you have to get this within how many days? 26 January days. Course, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. time. And it ships April 17th. Mm hmm. Right in time for spring. Is that when Solaris is coming out, though? Uh, Solaris is March? supposed to be come out in March. March, okay. So, so basically, looking at like you bring this into in, into the match, you know, like into the ring, basically with Hunter Tunner, which is, I mean, you just unload with with heavy guns or something like that. Just be crazy. Be interesting to mm -hmm. see those uh, battles that are coming out, like in the new game mode. Yeah. Um. Uh, be interesting yeah. to see how it comes out. I'm really curious, at least from a game design perspective, how PGI will attempt to balance the Fafnir, because mm -hmm. for however much um, people are really eager for this mech, for me personally at least, I'm like, I already have my Annihilator. I'm just looking forward to the missile and ballistic. Yeah, and actually now, I don't really pilot many assaults, but um, this might be one I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. I, I just One like... a little note as well, just by contrast, would be all of them only have upper arm actuators. So mm -hmm. you, Apex, um, that it, man. means two Thank more you. slots for all your Thanks, builds, man. but also you're never <laughs> Happy going to New be able to as well. <laughs> so move your arms left to right. So you know, at large mentioned like using streaks. Do this appreciate won't it, buddy. necessarily Thank be you. the best streak maker Thank because you, the, you have like the donation. entire torso at the top. My, my wrist which, is me. which is frightening, which we might see many lerm, or if I take it, I'm taking merm. Mm. I think Merm's going to be yeah, Merm's yeah. Merm's gonna quite be often. Yeah. I mean, I've been mm -hmm. having fun with my trebuchet with the Merm 60. It's been working very nice. <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> 
But to reiterate, to get the missile stuff, you have to buy the extra stuff. Yeah. It's uh, only if you're getting just the standard pack, it's just ballistic and energy, which is yeah. been there, done that, and even and... less options than before. What yeah, and do I miss? Yeah, and as I was gonna say, I need my missile because like missiles are like my <laughs> my go to weapon in this game, and I might actually break, and I might actually get the reinforcement. Um, and that hero, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, hopefully, quickly, uh, Smurthy or whatever. You know, you can try and throw some builds together online and see what you actually feel like would work. Yes, um, I was actually... building for this thing is going to be probably pretty difficult. I mean, theory crafting. Mm -hmm. Like what I was thinking is with the uh, uh, with the what was it the five C U of B is put a flamer on the head and then you have the two ballistics which would be heavy goss and then the four energy you could you know or yeah you know, the four energy you just put something like you know like you know like small pulse scissors or something like that but you could get a massive head hit and just like the Nova build from Beef flame them and then just knock out their head and I've been seeing a lot of that uh, like through the uh, through through a bunch of Cyclops mechs coming out like in the uh, in normal gaming in quick play. Yeah, B yeah, Beef used that on one of his uh, m most recent streams. Oh, it was did? like three flamers, two heavy gals, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and, and it will knock things out really easily. That's part of why I saw it then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why it. That's uh, he's a trendsetter. <laughs> he's a trendsetter. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the Beef the Beef put out one of his um, stream highlight videos, and it was him like I think killing seven mechs with it in his Cyclops, and then all of a sudden the, the hype train <laughs> the hype train <laughs> hopped on, and it oh was my like, god. That is so, funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Another... Great match though. Great match. Oh, though. Yeah. Another funny thing, at least to mention, uh, a lot of people have been mumbling about this is because half of them have ECM. You know, at least defend number are going to try and stealth builds. Uh, oh yeah. Like no longer close. is the Atlas DDC the only ECM 100 tonner. We suddenly now have three more of them. True. Mm. And that's also the really difficult question in terms of balancing, because the ECM mix and ECM is pretty valuable in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a giant walking torso. It needs all that survival stuff, or at least uh, for a lot of the brawling people want to do, you want that survival stuff. I see this mainly just a brawling mech, to tell you the truth. Everyone's going to fit as much crap crap on it as possible and just go to town. That's the only thing I see this from. As far as, like, stealthing yeah. around, like, you know, I'm going to sneak over this rock and hide over here and go shoot. I don't really see that as much. With my giant side torso, he's going to hide. <laughs> I'm going to hide behind this little tree. No, I, I don't see it being more of a, um, like, using stealth armor. I mean, you will find some builds that will do it, though, but I highly don't see this hiding in the corners and, and jumping out and saying boo and that type thing. I think it's right. um, uniquely one of the few mechs that can do quad light gas stealth if you really hate yourself. Mm. Yes, yes, true. Yeah, you really hate yourself. Actually, a person back in the chat, I wanted to actually comment. Uh, I think a person said, like, quad light gals and PPCs. Ooh. I was like, oh my. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, don't, please don't do this. <laughs> the one thing I see stuff could be useful for is just to get into position without getting lermed. So. No, you already be. have the maybe. ECMs. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, like just the superior ECM, so to say. But, eh. <laughs> yeah, I am interested also, at least when they bring this out, what would they do? Like, if this thing comes out with good survival stuff, the DDC will be even more redundant than it already is. <laughs> like, I know, this... I bought one, I, haven't used, I barely even used it. <laughs> and now I'm not going to use it. Is, um, it's got the full... Uh, buffs in terms of survival, but it's all structure rather than yeah. armor. Well, it will just put it out of the. It'll put it out into the pasture just like Dark Age did. All the other mechs, it's like, oh yeah, we fought for seven hundred years, constant war for every single every single planet, and then oh, we're gonna go, you know, swords of plowshares. We're gonna start start farming. Oh wait, hundred hundred years later, we gotta go fight again. Oh, get the mechs out of the, um, you know, get the mechs out of the garage. Just go fight again. It's gonna be like that, and and the Atlas is just gonna go into the pasture and just die pretty much, because because you see power creeping happening constantly through the game itself. This will be better and better mm -hmm. and better. And it's, yeah, it's probably, that's probably what's going to happen, though. Unfortunately, though. It would be uh, interesting, since you're talking power creep, it would be interesting if they actually took a, a few of the older mechs, and I don't know, is there different variants that would bring older mechs to the power creep level? 
Uh, uh, uh yeah, do that. Probably. Uh -huh. I, I'd have to check Sana for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the difficult check thing works, is, so. at least, um, differentiating the different mech types and what really creeps up the power level, so to speak. So, um, the thing um with the atlas is it's big giant wide body its weapons are often quite low slung and it's always a ballistic one side a missile other side then kind of a couple of energy spread all over the place the annihilator brings the ballistic and energy in large amounts although you know lots of variants with that uh, the fafnir also brings that and ecm um and you don't want to just make an atlas with you know ballistic and energy all over the place that doesn't yeah. really doesn't it, it won't even save the mech because the big problem is the shape um and of course the Fafni is already come you know is gonna come out with its own ballistic and missile all over the place variants as well. <laughs> mm. So you the, the question of power creep is uh, the Annihilator and Fafnir could both have quite um better shapes than the Atlas for spreading damage because the Atlas is always this big Gigantic wide shape, target. You know? So when the Fafnir does come out, I would like to take uh try and brawl some people uh, with the Atlas K against it, because uh, the mm -hmm. Atlas K, the current king of the Atlases, in my opinion, <laughs> he might give it a run for its money if it doesn't have um, all the quirks it needs. Mm -hmm. So, and... um, speaking of the Atlas going up against the Fafnir in a 101, um, the Fafnir is going to come out after the Solaris came out, so how do you think the Fafnir is going to perform in the 1v1 Solaris mode? Well, I think this goes all the, like um, into the tangent of the Solaris game mode, so... Uh, Perhaps we should wrap up the Fafnir and, uh, and then try to do something. Yeah, we could do that. Let's just bridge it in. Actually, the one cool thing about the the standard pack is you pretty much get the heavy gosses, you know, heavy, and you get the heavy gosses for free, which is two mil, which would be two million. So you can just pop those onto the five, what to the five B, I think it is, and you got your mm -hmm. uh, you got your mech right there. So that's kind of nice. So and they all start and with endo it. and double heat sinks yeah, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry, I'm just always like thinking about saving money. That's who I am. <laughs> no, same man. I, I hear you. <laughs> Fair but enough. yeah, man, the heavy guys. That's a million each, man. That's a lot of like sea bills. So uh, yeah, cool deal. Couple of ultra, couple of ultra twenties as well. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah, AC twenties, yeah, ultra twenties, yeah. And the light PPCs, those are pretty expensive. Gauss rifles, obviously, are pretty expensive. So yeah, it's it's a it's a cost effective type thing to go ahead and move those over or just by just by the standard pack itself. I mean, Grant, you just go grind it out, though. Don't get me wrong. I like this model in some respects. While still, again, um, it would be great if we could just buy the one, the, the particular mechs we want, because we don't need the three mechs to master anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but this this model seems to be what they're sticking with throughout the uh, you know as foreseeable future. And yeah, it gives three different variants of the same kind of thing. You can reinforce to missile and energy mm -hmm. or ballistic, and you can hero it up for jack of all trades. It's, sure, a, it's a nice yeah. pricing model. I like it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, we wanted to chime into the Solaris topic. Yeah, let's just do a segue here. Solaris uh, city map or Solaris in general. To yes, Solaris let everyone know I'm going to so, go around um, the, as we've mentioned the Solaris, earlier thing podcast, here. Solaris The Solaris patch, which is going to come in March, is going to feature a whole lot of different things. And I think we've decided that today we're going to cover the mech lab and the city map, and then the game mode itself will probably be next week yeah i feel like at least um to get everyone up to speed though it's to some degree you should actually just cover the game mode um but yeah i'm fine <laughs> with whatever <laughs> cool deal i mean the map basically as as an old pj like design they always have like a centralized location um you can find this in in the canyon you find this in in the uh um, pretty right. much yeah like any type of map there's a centralized location and the city map they actually have like if you watch the video they have like kind of like a city park type thing that everyone you know fights in basically a big open area type thing and that's usually like that's a standard pgi type thing so you're definitely yeah. going to see it yeah um uh, i think this is just to be clear um the solaris city map the map is for quick play basically yeah yeah whereas mm -hmm. What we were actually starting with was the Solaris mode, which has its own maps coming out with the patch. Yes, and we have uh, screenshots of those or no? Of the um, actual Solaris I maps? Didn't know I'm actually playing the video like right now. Nothing yet? Okay. But basically we've seen the Steiner Colosseum. Uh, well, yeah, to get everyone up to speed, the um, Solaris game mode that they're bringing up in March 
is going to be a 1v1 or a 2v2 mode in small a little arena maps and uh in metcon they did a big huge announcement video you know sort of trying to sell the concept of solaris and all the bits and pieces that are coming with it and part of that was they showed yes there's the steiner coliseum it's kind of deserty and stuff um but there's also going to be what is it there's a iridian boggy kind of one yeah, yeah. or grassy mm -hmm. there's a larvary one there's an icy one maybe one for every type of like environment too hmm. be nice it might be uh, different temperatures as well and plus be interesting plus making those maps would actually be pretty easy to do since it's one contained environment instead of actually a huge big ass map that they have to go you know go and design so like you could have yeah. like you know like a little desert type thing you could have like uh, cold you know uh, just like i said the bog one you could have like you know I, I don't know just whatever you want basically it'd be easier for them to design um arena maps and it is to do gigantic humongous freaking crazy maps like the other maps that we have so like a lot less mm -hmm. detail pretty much you know, at least mm -hmm. i think i don't know yeah well and, fireball uh, i mean they'll probably be a detail but at least smaller which would be you know yeah yeah one v one yeah and uh, to broach into a, t a question ian brought up before was the question of um uh, atlas versus fafnir are they going to be on the same tier because uh, obviously um, if I bring uh, my little locust against an atlas, <laughs> it's quite an interesting little fight, but should they always be fighting against one another? Or even just, you know, let's say my 50-ton brawler against a 100-ton brawler. Obviously, the 100-ton is usually going to, you know, trounce the 50-tonner. Oh, yeah, um, true, true. So I think it's, they said, was it seven separate divisions? It's and it's going to be seven different divisions, yes. Plus and it's, it's, it's um, differentiating by variant rather yeah. than chassis. Mm -hmm. plus, plus it's based on your elio score too so like basically how well you're doing in the game itself you're going to go against other people that are um the same match skill so like you're not going to be fighting say like you're not going to fight say uh i guess like a tier five guy quote tier five guy is going to fight the beef or or fight you know whoever's the type guy type thing you know yeah i can't classes. just uh club seals forever yeah exactly yeah so Here's actually something interesting I just uh, noticed, and I posted you the screenshot in this code. Um, mm -hmm. The divisions don't seem to be completely reliant on bait. Like, for example, in uh, Division mm -hmm. 1, in the screenshot we see an them, and then Division 2, the Kodiak, all the way going down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not purely going to be weight separated, uh, but probably uh, people with lower elo can bring more tonnage into their division, something like that. It, Ooh, it's going to no, be really no, no. interesting like this uh this is all you know whatever they threw into the trailer it, it could yeah. totally be different when it actually comes <laughs> true, out true. but yeah yeah it, it totally makes sense at least that you're going to have lights mediums and he heavies and assaults spread all across these seven uh, uh tiers for the most part perhaps with the lighter mechs you know being uh higher you know the, or the lower tiers or whatever you call it mm-hmm because they're, they're not going to be... It's going to be a lot of work to kill off an assault mech with one light mech, even if you can try and snipe mm -hmm. them forever. Yeah. I, I'm curious to see how, how this... Like, they're doing it by variant as well, so it specifies not just the Kodiak, but it's the Kodiak 1, it's the awesome yeah. 8Q, etc., etc. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this is going to be a ridiculous balancing challenge because there's, like, what, 100 different chassis out there, each with... <laughs> five or six variants let's just say 600 mechs so to fair, yeah, fair enough <laughs> maybe maybe they're just going to do it based on um chassis you know as far as like uh um you know weight class basically and then also match it up with the elio score that's the only way that i could think be the fairest thing to go to do granted some people's builds would be 100 percent better than other people but uh this is just going to be uh i mean that would be the fairest way to go do it like anything like for that because cause you can't have, like, just like you're saying, 100 different chassis, you know, every every chassis variant, because there's not enough people playing MechWarrior line to let alone have a tier system that's based off chassis. You have to do it based off weight class. Here's also a different thing. Um, if we actually go and take a short peek at the Solaris lore, which I know PGI isn't uh, too keen about, but um, the highest tiers in on Solaris 7 were always open. So you could bring whatever mech you wanted. Oh yeah. Huh. So Maybe I do they'll... wonder if I do wonder if Division One is going to be completely open, so you can actually bring a locust against it, Atlas, and just prove through your skill that you're still superior. I would I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I'm still disappointed you can't actually place CBL bets on on uh, on different arena matches, but uh, uh, I understand I understand gambling. <laughs> just 
they should take out Seabill purchasing to make that happen because I would just definitely love to do that. But uh, <laughs> but um, it, it's kind of cool. You do also do have contracts with the different corporations, and you kind of like uh, you know I'm going to work for X Y Z Corporation, or or I'm going to work for like Detroit Mortars, which is a corporation by the way, in in the BattleTech. You go to work for them, and then I'll I'll be representing them. So you have a little like Detroit like you know symbol like on your on your chest or something. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of neat though. I don't know, you know, just be, it, it's going to be interesting to go check these out, though. But yeah, to hammer home on the point about different variants, like um, Omnimex, um, there are differences between the different variants, at least sometimes also when you, you've got all the Omnipods, or mm -hmm. it's just even that center torso Omnipod, like take, for example, the Ice Ferret. Um, mm -hmm. You can have ECM in the center torso, or Energy in the center torso, or nothing in the center torso. Yeah. And all those can radically change how your build performs. Um, but obviously, all the other Omnipods are totally switchable. So do you just have the Ice Ferret as you know one individual uh, variant? Like you just say, Ice Ferrets, they're all going to be considered under one thing. And is there any Omnimax out there that you know have clearly better variants than others? That's an interesting yeah, that's... point. Mm -hmm. Because you can't really balance per se like the mechs against the other types of mechs because it's all based on off of builds and you know i you know like a um like i could be a tier five guy I go i got my little laser and my machine guns and i'm gonna come in with my kodiak or something like that and then he brings in the same thing but he has like super duper like meta mech type thing just totally annihilates him that's why the elo score will come into effect yeah like i i think the balance will be part mech but mostly player you know, like basically, how many wins, losses, and old like match it that way. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, that that that's that's how I see it being balanced. Because I mean, it's it's gonna be really hard to balance a mech when you know there is a wide variety of builds that that can be put into this. And you know, people are gonna be doing some awesome meta mech brawler builds type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, coming out. It's also, I mean, the interesting thing, at least. Um, a balancing perspective will be um relative uh like if you compare different like uh someone like me i have a huge vast stable of mechs all of which i have plenty of experience with whereas others of course might have a very limited stable of mechs so if your mech doesn't have if your limited uh options are you know tiered way too high and they're being crushed by the competition uh, mm -hmm. not, it might not be very fun, whereas someone like me, I have so many options, I can find something that you know, uh, uh, is placed on a re much lower tier than it really should be, in my opinion, and I know a really good build, and I can just jump to whatever I think is fun. Like There's going to be a huge disparity between uh, veterans and uh, less uh, prolific players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. But of course, you know, like we're just kind of like speculating. But I think uh, around February, that's when we're actually going to uh, hear some more details. I think, yeah, at least I think, or when they do like the, uh, you know, like uh, their roadmap. You know, hopefully. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's when we'll know. So when do they normally do the roadmap, though? You guys know? I. Uh, I had them open two weeks ago. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Basically, whatever they do the robot, they'll probably say, "Oh yeah, by the way, it's going to be this, and here's a little bit more information." And then, like every week before the the final patch of of the game mode, they'll they'll have like some like big like snippet, like you know, here's the corporations how that that could sponsor you. Here's how the gameplay is going to work. Here are the different, um, you know, here are the different like arenas you'll be able to fight and you know, type thing. They'll do every week. They'll do something basically. And then of course the yeah, day or two. Gonna... You know, yeah. Sorry, good. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna go. Th they're gonna explain all the details as um, uh, a pr uh, release date arrives. No doubt, PGI usually is fairly open with how they're developing the game and uh, are actually quite receptive to some degree to yeah. feedback. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean, of course, they're able to change what they're developing on a dime, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how well it is implemented at all. Um, I think at least it's going to be really rocky when coming out, or at least I have. A, I think it's going to be really uh, for the balancing guys, a really tricky challenge to balance oh, yeah. out everything. It because will. Um, what I'm saying with these uh, seven different groups, you're splitting uh, the people playing into seven seven different categories, which 
might mean with the limited player base that certain categories might not get enough players or you know as time goes on not enough players but you also want more categories more ways to differentiate things because obviously there's way more differences between the mechs than just roughly if they're you know number one number two or number seven mm -hmm. do you think that uh, that they'll have like say like um say i you know large i want to fight you like on you know, like on the map that you could just go there, but but actually counts towards your uh, um, counts counts towards something like counts towards your like either. Oh, or... like a like plan duel. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah, like I plan honestly duel. think if you're in the same division, that's gonna happen. Um, there is actually a screenshot um, where you can put matches between certain warriors on a watch list. Okay. So... Okay. That'd be interesting. Oh, that'd be cool if we actually watch the stuff because I would. Oh, just, oh. That would be freaking mm -hmm. awesome. Well, well, I mean, I like I do want to watch matches because I mean, how like I mean, I would just sit if here at the computer just on like a slow day <laughs> and just have it on the background, you know. And <coughs> speaking of uh, something Bob mentioned earlier, if we have watch lists, it's it should be kind of easy to implement a betting system maybe in the future to come. Gambling. Well, no. Well, if I they think, if they um, take out the purchasing C bills out of their thing, which I think no one freaking buys anyways, they take that out, then you can start doing this. Mm -hmm. you know, one then you can start big other aspect, other than just this works out and replace faction mode for better play, how different players respond um, to the Solaris experience will. Be let me get to the question, like one second, hold on a second. I.e., how clunky are the menus? How well do they explain what's going on? And just plain and simple, how quick can you get into a game? Yeah, like true. that can make and break Solaris. Catch more for um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, no, yeah. well, no. Well, actually, not only that, but just the the comp. You know, was it the comp teams? Who here still does comp teams? Well, does anyone do oh, comp here's teams? a question though. Like, I have a question from Epix. He says, "I have a question. If this works out, can it replace faction mode for competitive play?" I mean, mm. I don't, I, I don't think it's going to replace it. I think it'll be another like you know, you know, they only have one versus one and two versus two. You can't really have like you know twelve versus twelve or anything, but uh, it, it's kind of like a grudge match type thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, it's uh, interesting too because in my chat, um, uh, Dexiled says, "I hope they make it no consumables." Yeah, uh, policy. You well, know, it's just with no airstrikes. Mainly based, mainly God, no airstrikes. <laughs> yeah, just, um, yeah, just 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 have it just have it solely based on player skill and the builds, obviously. Yeah, and the builds. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really well, that's good. a difficult thing. Like, uh, do you incorporate anything from the skill tree? Because um, the most consistent thing to do is have you know you build, you buy the mech, you build the mech, you skill it up, and those skills apply to Solaris, they apply to quick play, they apply to faction play. Like um, having skills sometimes apply and not apply to different modes is really annoying, particularly when rebuying nodes cost XP. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be the same. I mean, it's the same between faction play, competitive, and quick play, so I'm going to assume it's be the same. I mean, I, I wouldn't really yeah. mind as far as the skills being transferred between, basically, as far as, like, you got skills on Solaris, you got skills on, you know, faction, faction quick play, it doesn't really bother me. Because it's just, it's just how you skill your mech and that how you, I guess, quirk your mech, you know, to do certain things, like you have better heat sink or something like that, and that's basically what icy skills is. You know, like, you know, like I said, the individual pilot, you know, like itself. Mm -hmm. I'm actually still giggling at that picture of um, you fighting in the Solaris arena on in the Steiner Coliseum, and you call in an airstrike, and then an aerospace fighter drops in and drops the airstrike right on top of the um, viewers' tribune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and actually, and then also in the, in the chat, um, there, and then uh, again, uh, it, it's a uh, Dexal saying, "We'll just you know just plainly just switch the skill tree off." <laughs> You know, for Solaris, or even like, better, mm -hmm. stock builds. You you are a true mech warrior if you can use a stock build and beat people. You well, are a true Nano brought that up earlier too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, all the people that think all you know they're all like you know God's gifted like mech warrior and everything. But if you can take a stock mech and beat other people who have meta builds, you are a true god. Oh, it's freaking think, rough, dude. Yeah, it's rough. I dude. think um, I've always sort of advocated at least them um, for continual player engagement. Um, the brawl or um, you know uh, special event modes are always quite fun. So mm -hmm. um, what it could be is um, every week you have 
oh, uh, this um, it, it's one v ones, but you're only you know when you drop with a mech, it's got no skills, it's got no consumables, and it's got a stock loadout, and people just run with that. Or oh, every time you drop, you're dropping in this one or you know stock build, and that way you can have lots of fun little one v one draws. That'd just people cool, taking it casually. Yeah. I'm, I'm... I'm thinking though, um, like customized max actually will be a big part of Solaris in the lower. Oh, yeah. So, um, like purely stock mode, that's not gonna happen. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind having maybe one division that's stock only, that's or fun. just the option basically say like I want to fight Larch in stock mode or something like that. Mm -hmm. Audio, yeah, just something yeah. like that. Yeah, that, that you know that'd be kind of cool to have. You know, yeah. just like we have that now, like within normal, uh, um, normal like you know like normal. Well, matches. just the option in quick play, like um, that you can. Chuck on like we already can do the Steiner Colosseum, but you can't even do two v two yet, even though that's what it's going to eventually be used as. And mm -hmm. uh, you can only have two spectators. Yeah, which is kind of bizarre. You know, basically, I don't know what they're going to do for that as far as like what, having people watch the mode. You know, like, go and watch the match. I don't know how they're going to. I don't know how they're going to like incorporate that or something because that, that's going to yeah. be a lot of freaking uh, server space just to go ahead and have that running in some type of like window saying click this to watch that match or something like that yeah but anyway guys just, just in terms of time we probably should uh keep okay. moving it along here okay what do you got up next uh next up would be uh patreons and the other patreon like thingy the what well Sponsors. there's a whole there there's go. a whole bunch of stuff in solaris uh so yeah you're you're earning like your own um, reputation after you win matches you can yeah. earn sponsors and you can also earn C-Bills and the more sponsors you have uh, the more you gain this, that and the other mm -hmm. Let's actually start mm -hmm. off with patrons real quick because patrons as far as I can tell are going to be your base source of income so patrons is probably going to be like the factions right now you uh, find a patron that pays you for every match you play and mm -hmm. then in addition you're going to have what Vida just mentioned uh, depending on your performance people might sponsor you mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Well, just like Detroit Mortars, basically, like they might actually sponsor you, saying, you know, represent us. And maybe you might get, um, um, maybe they might actually have where you have to repair their mech. And so Detroit Mortars mm -hmm. will help have, have uh, they might, you know, have it a half off because they're going to give you the, the parts and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. As a sponsor, I, I don't know, it might be interesting to go check out. Yeah, it might be interesting to do, actually. Be more realistic, oh. you know. Yeah, or uh, for example, have um, General Mortars as their Patreon. And then maybe Defiance Industries um, pays for your micro repairs. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah, there you go. That'd be mm. perfect, actually. You know, something like yeah. that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. It all depends, again, about the uh, the cycle, the uh, balancing and all that, because um, you want to encourage people to play even if they aren't necessarily the best or they haven't already secured the sponsors. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see how they do it all, because... Um, it, it could just be a really trivial thing having the sponsors, and that could be a shame, but also if you're missing out on the sponsors, like you're quote-unquote not good enough to be sponsored, that doesn't feel good either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to have like, you know, some Joe Schmo sponsor from Planet XYZ that needs to jump in Solaris or something like that saying, oh, I'm going to sponsor you! And, you know, they're going to have like the low-tier sponsors too. And then it gets up and up there, um, there like just like Defiance Industries, you know, a couple other bigger, bigger um, the corporations will say like, we're going to sponsor, say, the Beef, and then the Beef will, you know, he'll get extra stuff or something like that. They'll have a low tier in high just, um, it might it's actually be... something I just uh, stumbled upon. Um, your Patreon performance um, is going to have 10 ranks. So hmm. the longer you fight for one Patreon, the more you're going to get from that Patreon per Ooh, game. Okay. okay. Well, just like Faction my Warfare. Issue... Like, like Faction Warfare. Yeah. yeah, my concern, I think, perhaps, uh, is that you know, with Faction War, yes, there's all these attempts at trying to do law stuff or whatever, but uh, at the end of the day, I just really only look at the game mode and how it rewards me yeah and yeah. you know they don't do so great at the whole law business so i i think the more important like for me i'm just concerned um whether this will just be a whole bunch of extra baggage that just makes the whole thing extra complicated to understand that doesn't really change things much 
I don't know. Like I'm a lore, I'm a lore nerd, so like you'll you'll just make me happy. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we can always hope. I'm just saying. At least, um, uh, my bigger priority, at least from a gameplay dis- uh, standpoint, is always just you know make the mode fun and rewarding for players. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, rather than trying to do stuff towards lore and then having all this mercenary loyalist um, uh, and freelancer stuff that just gets really confusing when trying to explain to people um what faction mode is and how to do it yeah yeah mm-hmm. i definitely understand that though they want to make it like you know feasible for the mainstream people that do play this game because like i think maybe there's about 35 to 40 percent that are like hardcore lore the rest are kind of like i want to shoot mechs with like you know big guns type thing and so so like you'll yeah. find that basically they're trying to like you know like adhere to the mainstream part of mech war online for the mainstream players Yeah, <laughs> that's just me. I'm just a lore nerd, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We'll just have to wait and see, honestly, yeah. how it goes. Obviously, I think, um, or at least in my mind, I'm thinking of some kind of compromise in the mindset of uh, you make gameplay mechanics that are really interesting to people that make them really want to engage in them, and they just so happen to tie in with lore. So, yeah, yeah when you're talking about um, people paying for repair, repairs, or as you said, General Motors, you know, there. Um, you just happen to have, you know, all the law accurate, but um, you include all of these options because they actually make gameplay sense. Mm-hmm. Granted, yes, it's what we hope what happens, and hopefully PGI does what, what you know, basically what we hope that they would do, a type thing to make it a little bit better, you know, type thing. I, I just hope they do a good job on it because this is going to... Um, it's gonna make and break a lot of different things because a lot of people are like, okay, well, I'm gonna go play BattleTech for you know, like you know, forever, and then go, and when World War Five comes out, they'll go play something else or when other big type of thing comes out. PGI really has to step up to the plate and go and go and knock this out of the park. I think a lot of people from what I've been hearing are quite keen and eager about the one v one mode, two v two modes, oh, Solaris yeah, in yeah. general. So, oh, I can't wait for it. Yeah. Again, like the with the Fafnir, it's a, a great way to try and get players back, try to keep your players around. It totally is the right way to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's not just all the gameplay mechanic stuff they're trying to balance, though, but it's also all the economies and such they're trying to, you know, obviously, yeah, you know, make a business out of this. So, oh, of course, of course. Um, I think there's, yeah, you earn C bills, you're earning XP, but you're also earning some other currency. I think you see in the trailer, yeah, and yeah. you know, there's the cosmetics and uh, loot bags and something like that. Oh, I didn't see loot bags actually. Well, uh, the cosmetics theory, I haven't touched on that one. Yeah, isn't it? Um, I, I remember it, it being mentioned the cosmetics you know, are in loot boxes. Mm-hmm. That's how they're going to try no. and monetize Solaris. No, so, um, the... if, if you watch the video, there's a, a quote from Duncan Fisher who mm-hmm. says, uh, You never know what's going to be in that supply crate that drops from your sponsor. Oh, mm-hmm. so yeah. what okay. I would expect coming from that single statement is um, given your performance, uh, your patrons, your sponsors, and so on. You're going to randomly get loot bags or supply caches, and those are going to have the hold on geometry. Which, by the way, you want to take over that one? All right, yeah. So, I mean, uh, because we've, we're running a little low on time, but that obviously, as uh, we have heard of them uh, a bit about the bolt on geometry before, but mm-hmm. it's just simply you can, uh, the way it looked like in the trailer thing, you can add things to the hands of your mech, to the shoulders of your mech, and the head of the mech. Yeah. So you can make it wear a hat, you can put something on its back, you can make it have shoulder pads. And this is just a, a way to make uh, printify your mechs. You know, everyone sort of likes cosmetics. Um, in gameplay mechanics, though, even though they make the mech bigger, they do not have their own hitbox. Once the component is hit, the cosmetics away. fall off instantly. So... Um, it's From a gameplay a perspective, day. it hopefully won't change things too much, other than very initially when you try, you beat your opponent, they go, ah, he's got a bowler hat! <laughs> <laughs> if I see a mech with a bowler hat, I don't know what I would do. Do you, <laughs> do you think they're going to change out the, the like supply crates into whatever that thing is? It would make quite a bit of sense, because the current uh, crate thing is just not actually even doesn't really make sense for as, yeah. as a sen- uh, means of monetization what you want well, from these things is that can people could buy the boxes the and unlock the boxes Maybe. with real world money they can speed up getting cosmetics because this is a purely cosmetic thing you're not mm-hmm. buying power yeah yeah, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, w I would say um, this system for supply caches is much better than the one we currently have, so I'm really hoping they just replace the cooler I, one. I mean, I'm just hoping... I just would hope so, because they keep talking about how they want to update the supply caches and everything, and I'm, like, I'm getting them, I'm not unlocking them, I'm waiting for that update to hit. A big question for me, at least, um, whilst the cosmetics they showed off were kind of nice, they were also a little bit tacky. Um... It, it will be made, or it will be a make or break, depending on how much uh, of the art pipeline and whatnot they can shove towards making these pretty little objects, and how much mm -hmm. uh, people will even glob onto it. I get uh, if people glob onto it in a big way, you could probably expect cosmetics are going to return, perhaps to quick play and faction play if it really shoots yeah. off. I get people actually saying that basically with the uh, like like one had like an axe or something like that. It's like well you can't do hand to hand combat, so what's the use of having the axe? But it just looks cool, you know. Basically, it looks <laughs> scary. <laughs> that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It looks yeah. scary when that guy comes at you with with a Kodiak with a big freaking axe. Yeah, that would scare the crap out of yeah. me. Yeah. With <laughs> that yeah. and claws. Yeah. Yeah. No, the only slight issue I sort of have, or at least it's an interesting one to think about, is it's individual items. So even if you get uh, the barbarian's axe. You sort of need the barbarian's hat and the barbarian's shoulder pads, <laughs> uh, which Matching is really sets. annoying, particularly if it's going to be random loot boxes or whatever. Or there's no way to, you know, make sure you get some alternative currency to buy it another way. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> I would hate to have to uh, get all, you know, buy, buy lots and lots of boxes until I get the full barbarian set. That the other suck, thing, dude. at least in terms of cosmetics, is um, I really like the paint scheme thing where obviously you can, there's a whole slew of colors and there's a whole bunch of paint schemes so you can paint your mech however you like. And then you can put decals all over your mech wherever you like, at least you know, a fair number of decals. And that can totally, that's a lot of options for people to do cosmetics. This Barbarian Axe thing though, it's got one use and one use only. And it, it, may comp it might conflict with your Barbarian Mace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just it doesn't infuse me so much as decals or paint schemes do because it isn't as flexible. Mm -hmm. If I could just stick barbarian axes anywhere, that would be funny. <laughs> oh yeah, true, true. I'm watching the trailer now, basically, and and if they have Haven as a, a voice actor, I think that'd be cool too. Like even with Duncan Fisher, but having Haven as well would be even better. Mm -hmm. It'll be really cool for him to just go ahead and add add into the different ambiance of it because he has a really good voice for this. Oh, he does, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at they got the trees, they got the uh, um, they got the snow, they got the bog basically. So so it, yeah, like a lot of different game modes that they're gonna go ahead and have for this. This would be pretty nice. This season starts with the Solaris Oversight Committee dividing every no seven divisions into seven divisions. Each division is based on a number of properties, ranging from loadouts and profiles to flat-out... Yep, we'll have to just, um... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I think, um, it's a very lofty goal, and, um, at least, you know, um, Mech Royal Online is not being left in the dust. It's, it's not just Mech... Uh, mech packs that are coming out every time, um, every so often. As we said last year, they did the whole skill tree change, and they've done the whole new tech. They're doing big things for the game, and Solaris is at least a very ambitious project oh, that yeah. uh, could have a lot of potential, and is something a lot of people are quite interested in. I, I know, I'm definitely like interested in this because this is, you know, I got the board game or the box set from way time, way time ago. We used to play it all the time, and with this, I mean, heck, you can play it on a computer, it'd be even better. <laughs> it's be crazy cool. Yeah, me personally, I quite enjoy brawling. So obviously, at least in one v ones, two v twos, it typically is going to devolve very quickly into a brawl, or at least a lot of the meta is going to be brawl. You either brawl or you run away really, really fast and use medium lasers to scratch them to death, just like in scouting. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like you know that I mean, but there's there's not enough time right now, but it'd be it'd be interesting to talk about builds for Solaris, and that could be just one whole entire like podcast honestly i mean well, it's just it like scouting out. really it's just pick brawl or pricks i'll pick you know runaway snipe um, yeah. i'm not sure really there's i mean you can run away learn but otherwise obviously a lot of builds and play styles just do not suit the 1v1 environment of course brawling not. is just the way to go mm -hmm. okay so i don't know is is, is it time or what 
Uh, we're getting pretty yeah. uh, high yeah, it's really on time, close, yeah. which is yeah, why was I was it... talking like we're wrapping up all this. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, because because w- was there anything else we had tonight? Um, we we could do a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, is there anything we missed on Solaris? No, I don't think so. I think we've covered Solaris yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah, different like leaderboards they have and patrons and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. It oh, looks neat. A little bit briefly will be, uh, you know, we talk um, two B. I mean, I think we're going more in details, just our thoughts about how one V ones and two V twos go. But um, it's interesting, at least having uh, rather than an average ELO, you just pick the highest ELO when people go two V two, uh, which can be kind of a nuisance because if someone really likes Solaris and they're trying to get their friend into it, um, and they both drop together, they're going to be on the ELO of the guy who plays all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not averaged out. Um, and I mean, obviously, there's lots of opportunities for people creating stock accounts and all that stuff, and maybe yeah. you're trying to put a you know a foot in that. Um, but it does also mean, at least from my perspective, I'll probably get a fairly high ELO, and then I'll have to bring along one poor other sod, you know, to fight with me. So um, <laughs> instead of just that. messing around with a lot of the other people in Lash's group who might not always necessarily be, <laughs> you know, the most <laughs> meta tryhards. Instead, me, I have me. to go out and find some meta tryhards to, you know, um, compete on my level, which is a little shame because I like messing around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but um, I think that may have mostly been it. Um, was there anything else we wanted to squeeze in last minute, or no? No, I think that's it, really. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So. Uh, we'll probably be covering more of the stuff coming out in the, over the year. There's the Solaris map, which we barely touched on, a whole bunch of other stuff, including Map Warrior 5 that <laughs> we've been yeah. wanting to get onto, but there's always One just so day. many things coming out. <laughs> there's a lot of One videos we'll out for there. it, too, so yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. All right. It's all good. Well, then, guys, I think we're going to call this uh, a night then. Um, but uh, if you're still watching at least any of our streams, uh, Probably in about a half an hour from now, we're going to be hopping back down to my Discord, and we're going to be doing uh, ECM or Stealth sh- um, shenanigans tonight uh, for a theme stream. Should be a lot of fun. Theme stream night. Yeah, theme stream. Theme stream. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, theme stream. So, anyway, uh, this has been Lorsch, your casual mech warrior. Uh, as always, you can find me on the Twitters at Lorsch underscore O one and. Biter. Yep, you can find me. By, I'm Biter. I might just think my links will be in the description as always yeah. for whatever that's worth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Ian. Oh, oh, I'm Ian to say everywhere, so go ahead and check me out. Yes, and the old Bob. And the old Bob. Yeah, I'll be. You can find me on descriptions and all that kind of stuff. Like I'll have everything like down below of everyone else as well too. So check it out. Ooh, okay. And, and I should cool. have this up in about an hour or so. Yay. All right, guys. Well, anyway, uh, if you're, again, if you're still watching, um, maybe we'll see you in about half an hour. And uh, it could be good or it could be a disastrous show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually cannot wait. So we'll see you later, guys. Have a good night, everyone. See you on the battlefield. Bye-bye.